right. Uh, hey there, everybody. This is CP Cards and Dice, and welcome to, I believe now it's part six of ten for Fall Classic Baseball. We're doing a tutorial series, so you can kind of learn along as I play the 1967 season, and I'm recreating Tom Seaver's uh, season of starts for the New York Mets, his rookie season for the... Um, in this game, it's going to be the Atlanta Braves against the New York Mets. They're playing at Chase Stadium. It's going to be Philippe Alou, Mac Jones, and Hank Aaron in right field. And what I like to do is I like to write down the um, arm ability of the players, and you'll find that on their cards. The cards are very, very nice cards. Uh, they're fairly large. The font is fairly large. They're uncluttered. It's a lot of space. It's black on white, so you can see that very clearly. Um so I'll lose at first base. So we're not going to worry about that. But Mac Jones is going to be in center field, and he is going to be a three. So we want to write down the arm strength. We also want to write down speed well if we can, and that goes in here. And Mac Jones is going to be an A as well. Hank Aaron in right field. to play with Hank Aaron. And uh, let's see. Can't grab, grab these. All right, Hank Aaron right field is an A4. So we're going to write that. That's important for runners advancing. And this had, this, uh, this takes into consideration those, those factors. A4. Um, and then, of course, it's going to be his speed, which is fast. And then it's going to be Rico Cardi in left field. Now, he's not a very good fielder from what I remember. He's going to be a left field. Oh, he's also an A4, which is decent. And um, he is average speed in left field. And that's going to be it. We have your center fielder, right fielder, left fielder. We also want to know about our third baseman. Does he have a strong arm? His arm rating at third base is a strong arm. So Cleve Boyer with a strong arm. And that's going to make a difference for double plays. Dennis Menke is a shortstop, and his arm is average. And then finally, it's going to be Woody Woodward, who has an average arm as well. At, oh, wait, at second base, he has a strong arm at second base. Average arm at shortstop. He's really a shortstop. I remember him as a shortstop. So that's going to be it. Then for the Mets, we're going to do the same thing. Buddy Harrelson has an A arm. Cleon Jones in left field. No, he's in center field. He's going to have an A3 there. Tommy Davis in left field. He's going to be an A2. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it's going to be Ron Swoboda in, right, in uh, right field. He's a W4 weak arm for Ron Swoboda. And, of course, they're all fast, 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 ace, S. Fast, fast, A, S. And then again, so both is fast, A, A, S. Fast, A, A. Grody slow, and C, I believe, is slow as well. Um, now we want to know the arm for the, oh, wait, did I do the right fielder and I put it in the wrong spot? I put it in the wrong spot, so we will wipe that out. And then, of course, it's going to be the third baseman, Charles. His arm is, he's graded an A average arm at third. That makes a difference for double plays. Then Bob Johnson is playing second base, and at second base, Bob Johnson has an average arm. Jerry Grody behind the plate. I'm not going to worry about him right now. And then finally, it's Tom Terrific, whose arm, in terms of the fielding arm, not the pitching arm, obviously, he's an average arm for fielding. All right, so we're about to get started, and we use fast action cards. We're playing fast action, really playing a fall classic baseball. I'm really liking this game. Um, it moves really fast, and it has a lot of uh, detail. Now, one thing that really attracted to, to me to this game, and I'll tell you right there, hey, Bears Den is in the house. Hello, Bleacher Bums Gaming. Always great to see him. He does some great replays. Check out his channel. Um, 
his Fergie Jenkins. I watched a ton of his Fergie Jenkins, and and I was sucked in when I watched the the Cubs versus the '69 Mets. That uh, took me into uh, into heaven. Um, so, and that was about like two years ago. The first time I saw that, it took him about a year to to finish that that replay. Um, okay, so this is how you start the game. Pitchers have three cards rather than one. How cool is that, right? Pitchers have three cards rather than one. They have the A, the B, and the C stuff. You got your A stuff, your B stuff, or your C stuff today. You know, sometimes pitchers are just not themselves. They just can't get that slider over. Uh, they just the, the fastball isn't popping the way it normally does. For whatever reason, these, these things factor in. So this game has that. And Pat Jarvis also has three, basically three cards. He's got an A, a B, and a C. And I mean, you're getting really three cards per pitcher, which is pretty amazing. Um, pretty cool that they do that. So we're going to roll a die first to see a D20. We're going to see where that lands. So what kind of day? Now, that could definitely influence what kind of day Seaver's going to have. So let's do that. So if he's a C pitcher, I'm going to really notice immediately you know, that, uh, that he's not, he's not on top of his game and I'm going to keep a closer eye on him. And if he starts getting into trouble, I'm going to pull him a little bit sooner. Now, if he, if I roll a one to a six with him, right, that would be a 15 to 20 where he's in trouble. A one to a six would be, man, he's got good stuff today. Holy smokes. You know, that curveball is dropping off the table. He's getting the, the, the slider over, you know, the, the fastball's popping. You know, so he's really got it going. And then, of course, B is somewhere in between. So let's roll. Let's see what we get. And that is going to be a 17. He's going to be a C again. So C is a C. Pat Jarvis. Pat Jarvis is 17. So that's the, so they're both C pitchers. So we, we don't know what's going to happen in this one. They're both C pitchers, and that's not a great thing. Philippe Alou is leading off, and we're going to pull a card here. Um, and we're ready. So we're going to pull a card. I'm going to show you how to play this. You, the fast action cards are a must for this game to avoid all the charts. I mean, you got serious chart issues here. You got serious chart issues. Let's take a look at that. Look at that. You definitely don't. And I know those are some that I, that I left, left this bunch as well. But you definitely don't want to get into that. Just pull a card. And it has 11 columns, and column number one is a gives me 31. The D36, which is we're pulling first here, is a 31. 31 is usually a hit, not off the uh, off the batter card, but it's going to take us to the pitcher card. When there's a when on the batter card it's blank, as you can see, 31 is blank. That tells you go to the pitcher, check 31, and that is going to be a single. So that's a ground ball that gets through into the outfield. And Philippe Alou is on at first. I use the automatic steal, so uh, he's not stealing this time around. Mac Jones is up. I'm going to pull a card from Mac Jones. We're looking column one because it is because it is the first inning. So 36 on Mac Jones is going to be a blank. Now we're going to look at CC, and that's going to be an out. What kind of an out? It could be a double play. We'd like that, but it's not. He lifts one to center field. On the run is Jones, and he tracks it down for out number one. Now it's Hank Aaron, the slugger. And here's a pitch. It is going to be a 51. That's going to be a KD. We're looking at – so a KD is basically a defensive check. We're going to check the defense. But with uh, the defensive check, we, let, we get a chance to look at the KD number. At the bottom of the column that you're using, it's a one to two. So one to two on a D20 is going to be a strikeout, and it's a 13, so there's no strikeout there. So we are going to go at 21. We're going to a 51. We're going to look at the 51. We're going to pull a card and see what check. It's going to be an error check of some kind. Oh, an exotic chart check on the catcher. Look at that with one guy on. So who knows what this is going to bring us? So we got to look at the exotic chart. Here it is, the exotic chart, and this doesn't come up very often, so we don't have to worry about that. Pitcher and catcher. Um, so means of one out, two means of two outs, roll D20 versus E rating. What? 
means if you roll a d20 equal to or less than the E rating, it's a second error on a play. All right, so we're going to roll on the exotic error chart, see what happens. It's a d20, that's a 1, and a 1. Actually, we don't have to do that. We don't even have to roll right now. I mean, that, that may be a second error chart. We'll see what, what that means. Hold on a second. So let's look at runner on first base. Ball fumbled and kicked by the pitcher or catcher. It's the catcher. Told us it was the catcher. Into foul territory. An F or an A runner goes to third. And that is an, an A runner. So he's going to move to third on an error. All right, you're going out now, bud. My dog wants to get out. And uh, unless the A runner is slow. So F to third. Now let's see. Um, roll a D20 versus the E rating means if you roll a D20 equal to or less than the E rating is the second error on the play. So that's going to be a second error on this play. So that's what it says up there. Now, I could do that or I could not do that, but I am going to do that. I roll. It's a one. It's going to be another error on the catcher. So basically, he fumbles the ball. He kicks it foul. He goes after it. He's going to throw to third, and the ball is high, and it goes into left field. And the, the left fielder grabs it. So that's the exotic error chart. That's like a rare play type thing. So what are we going to get here? So we're going to get uh, – let's see what it was again. How many, how many, uh, with runner on first, kicked by the pitcher, foul territory. Okay, it was a catcher. F runner to third and batter to second. So, what we're going to do is we're going to send one run's going to score. Right? It's going to be, uh, I guess you could say it's two errors on the play. So, we're going to give the catcher two errors. So, one error is going to allow the runner to go to third. And then the other error is going to allow the runner to score. And then um, E2 is going to allow him to go all the way to third. So it's going to be E2 and then 2 again. And it's going to be two errors on the catcher, um, Jerry Grody. And now it's Rico Cardi. So that's how we kind of figured that out. All right. So that's, again, that's like a rare play. That doesn't happen very often. Okay, the next is 32. 32 on Rico Cardi's is a blank. We'll look at Seaver, and that's going to be a 1 to 16 double. And it's a 4, so it is a double, and that's going to score Hank Aaron. And there's a runner on second base. Only one out so far. Let's see if Seaver can get another out here. It's a 55. That's going to be a drive. Joe Torrey, the batter. It's going to be a drive off the bat of Torrey. And this is going to be a five. It's going to be uh, 55. That's going to roll to the wall, and that's going to score Cardi. Told you, when you're a C pitcher, you're, you're screwed. Again, a runner on second base. And here's another pitch. The next batter is Cleve Boyer. I'm trying to get a, an out, a 66, and that's going to be a deep drive off the bat of Boyer. And that ball is gone. Holy smokes. <laughs> All right. And that's going to be an RBI there. That way he drove in number four. Um, and he's going to drive in five and six. Two RBIs. And Seaver finds himself down five to nothing after six batters. Just like that. So um, we need him to get an out. We need him to go a couple of innings for us. Because if we start bringing in relief pitchers now, we're screwed. All right, let's see if we can get an out. 14, that's probably going to be an out. And it is. I don't care what it is. It's just an out. And uh, now Woody Woodward. Again, we pull a card. We look in the first column. It's a 66. That's going to be a hit. That's going to be hit hard. That's driven down the line. And that is going to be a base hit single. And here's the pitcher. Wow. And that's a 16, and that is a strikeout. So Seaver faces nine. In the first inning, allows five runs. 
off of one, two, three, four, five hits. That's are down five, nothing, just like that. Against Pat Jarvis. Pat Jarvis um, was 15 and 10 with a 1.3 whip. It doesn't give you the ERA. Almost 200 innings, 1.3 whip. Buddy Housen. I'm going to pull a card from Buddy House, and Here's the pitch from Jarvis. It's a 31, and again, that's going to probably be a single, and it is. Base hit for Buddy Housen. He's on at first. Cleon Jones is next. We're looking at that column one. It's a 56. 56 is a blank. We go to the C column because Jarvis is a C of 56, and that's a strikeout. Tommy Davis, pull a card. That's a one, a 31. 31 is a blank, but you go to Jarvis, and it's a single. Now, how do I know where he advances to? Well, I'm going to pull a card. It says he's going to stop at second base, just like that. So I got first and second with one out. And Eddie Steady, Eddie Crapo, he bats from the left side. He batted 269 in 1967. Here's a pitch. That's a 42. 42 is a blank. And it's a ball four. So bases are loaded for the, for the Mets. And up comes Ron Swoboda. Ron Swoboda batted 281. So he had a heck of a season um, for this era in 1967. Batted 281 with 13 home runs. Played in uh, 130 games. Kevin Hayes is in the house. Hey there, Kevin. Good to see you, brother. We're playing fall classic baseball. Um, super easy to play, as you can see. Uh, I can't you know, tell you how easy it is. The cards are beautiful. They're really, really nice, glossy, high quality. They are thinner. They're, they're, they're thinner than the payoff pitch cards, of course. Um, and the bases are loaded for the Mets in the bottom of the first. The top of the first was ugly. It was a single, then it was an out, then it was an error on the catcher where, where that allowed one runner to, to score and the other runner to go to third. Two actually were two errors by the catcher. It was an exotic play, they call it. It's like a rare play, a rare defensive play. Then it was a double by Cardi, a double by Torre, a home run by Cleet Boyer, and that was 5 nothing, just like that. Yes, sir. Tom Terrific struggled mightily in that first inning. Hopefully he'll settle down from this point on. Give us at least five innings. Um, all right, so Ron Svoboda with the bases loaded. Let's pull a card. Again, we're using column one. This has 11 columns. You can go up to the 11th inning. Every inning, I'm going to switch columns. So I get lots of different results. The 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 pack of, of that is a must, the facts are real thick, thicker than normal. See that? Pretty, pretty, pretty darn thick. So there you go. Um, all right, so I pulled the card. It's going to be a 25. 25 for Swoboda is going to say an out. We, in this case, we've got to find out what kind of an out. The infield's back on this. So I don't have to worry about that. It's a ground ball, and it's going to be a 4-6-3 double play. So they turn it, except F batter beats the throw. And guess what? Swoboda is F. So it's only going to be a fielder's choice. The run's going to score. Run scores. And that's going to be an RBI for Swoboda. And that's going to put runners on first and third with two outs. And up comes Ed Charles. Pull a card. It's going to be a 33. And Ed Charles rips one. And this is going to split the outfielders, I believe. Pretty almost. Yep, it does. And it's going to go for a base hit cut off quickly by the center fielder. And Charles, big turn and changes his mind. But that will score a run. And then what happens to the runner at first? Let's see. First to third advance, if the right fielder's arm is weak and his arm is, is not as average. Um, if he has an average arm with two outs, he advances. So he does have an average arm, so he will advance to third. So we got first and third. It's going to be an RBI single. Scores the third, so it's five to two now. So the... the the Mets are launching a little mini comeback. There is only one out here. Oh, two outs. Two outs with runners on first and third for Bob Johnson. Bob Johnson is a guy I don't know if you've ever heard of. Yeah, uh, you can. Yeah, uh, Kevin asked me, can I use one column for the whole game? Sure, absolutely. You know, you just pull cards and it's going to be a different 
number every card. You can put use one column. Every guy, all the guys do it differently. You know, if you go onto the Delphi site to learn about this game, all the guys, some guys skip a column. Like they'll do one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and then they'll come back and they'll start again. Everybody does their own thing. It's, that's what you know. That's what it's all about. All right. So I wanted to talk to you about Bob Johnson. Bob Johnson in 1967. He was a, a utility type infielder. He played first base, second base, third base, and shortstop. No outfield, no catcher. He had 230 at bats in 90 games. I bet you never heard about, about Bob Johnson. What do you have now? He batted 348, 348 average. He had 12 walks, 27 RBIs, five home runs, eight doubles, three triples, five home runs, 80 hits, and 230 at bats. Batted almost 350. Pretty funny. And he's coming up here with runners on first and third and two outs. The pitch from Pat Jarvis. Again, I'm using column one. It's a 64. 64 is a blank. We go to Jarvis C, and that's going to be an out. That's going to retire the side. Now, if we want to know what kind of out it was, we pull a card. It'll tell us it's going to be a ground ball second base over to first, and that retires the side. Just like that. Mets pick up two runs on one, two, three hits. And it's a five to two ball game after one. All right, so let's see if Tom can get out of an inning for us. We need him to give us a little bit. All right, here's Philippe Alou. And now we're going to look at column two. It's a 23. 23 is an out. One away. Mac Jones. Mac Jones, a lefty hitter. That had 253 with 17 home runs. He's got good power. It's a 45. 45 is – 45 says if somebody's on base, they can steal, I believe. Or if he, you know, if he, if Mac Jones gets on base, he tries to steal. He had ten stolen bases in sixteen attempts. So uh, we got a forty-five, and that's going to be an out. So nobody steals. The plus sign means there's a stolen base attempt. Here's Hank Aaron. It's a twenty-two, and that is a rip base hit, left center field. And he's going to have a – it's a plus sign after the single, so he's going to try to steal. Pretty simple to try to steal. There's a number right here. It's a five. If I pull a 20 – well, actually, I'll use this. D20 less than five, he has the jump. He does not get the jump. That's how easy it is to steal. Rico Cardi, here's the pitch from Seaver. That's a 61. That's a blank. So we go to Seaver's card, and that's a strikeout. Second strikeout for Seaver in this game. No runs. One hit. One left. Bottom of the second. Jerry Grody. Column two, 13, and that's an out. Again, it, I don't really, you know, I'll show you how to check for the out. It's very simple. Uh, next batter is a 66, and that's going to be Seaver. That could be a double. We're going to look for the 20 dotted side. It's an 18. That's going to be a single plus a stolen base. We're going to have to check. Seaver has a three, so we're looking at a D20. We're looking one to three, and it is a 14, so he does not go. Seaver's on it first with one out. Here's Buddy Harrelson. Buddy Harrelson's one for one. Here's a pitch. That's a two. That's a 34. 34 in Harrelson's card is a blank, so that's going to take us to Jarvis. C column because we rolled at the beginning, and that's going to be a base hit. So where does my runner go? He's on at first base. He's going to go to start. He's going to stop at second base, first and second. And Harrelson's two for two. Little Buddy batted uh, 254 in 1967. Here's the pitch from Jarvis. That's a 42. 42 on Cleon Jones is the batter. Now that's a blank. We look at a 42, and that's ball four. So Cleon Jones fouls off a couple of pitches and. Trots down at first with a base on balls. The bases are loaded. Got Seaver at third. You got Harrelson at second. You got Jones at first. And here comes Tommy Davis. This is the Mets' best hitter of 1967. Um, he is their best hitter of 1967. He batted 302 with 16 home runs and 73 RBIs. He played the whole season, 154 games. Tommy Davis. Uh, he's an okay outfielder. He's got he's he's an average runner. He had nine stolen bases in twelve attempts. 
basically 75%. And when you look at the stolen base, it's 75%. It's 15, right? Three out of four. So that's basically straightforward. I mean, this is going to give you good results, this game. Um, that's going to be a 25, right? It's the blue now. It goes from the yellow to the blue to the green, then the white, then the yellow, the blue, and the green, then the white. So it's a column two because it's the second inning. And it's a 25. Tommy Davis with a 25. That's going to be an out. That will retire the side. Oh, no. Wait a second. There's only one out in this inning with the bases loaded. So we're going to pull a card and see what kind of an out that is. It feels halfway. They're looking for that double play. Are they going to get it? It's a ground out back to the pitcher. Fielder's choice is second. Unless the pitcher's arm is an S, he starts a 1-6-3 double play. And we never wrote down Jarvis's arm. So Jarvis's arm defensively is going to be a weak defensive arm, which is a W. So he's not really a good defender. So he won't get the double play. It'll be a 1-6 to six fielder's choice. And that's going to be an RBI. Seaver's going to score. And it's going to be first and third. Steady Eddie Cranepool. With first and third and two outs. The score now is five to three. Mets are coming back slowly but surely. Here's the pitch from Jarvis. He's a right-handed pitcher. That's a 16. A 16 is an out, and that will retire the side. But the Mets pick up one run on two hits and a walk. They leave two, go to the top of the third. Tom Seaver is going to face Rico Car. Oh, no. He's going to face Joe Torrey, Cleet Boyer, and Dennis Menke. Both Torrey and, Me and, and Boyer uh, had hits in the first inning. Torrey a double, and then he was followed by a two-run home run by Cleet Boyer. Cleet Boyer is the better of the Boyer brothers. The other Boyer is with the Mets, and he is not very good. Cleet Boyer batted uh, 245, but he had 26 home runs, right? And his brother, uh, I don't remember his first name. He's here somewhere. Hold on a second. He's on the Mets. I believe it's his brother, Ken Boyer. Ken Boyer hit three home runs and batted 235. But only in 100, 166 at bats. So he either was injured or just not a regular everyday player. All right, that's the history of this 1967. This is Seaver's rookie season. Pat Jarvis, the lucky pitcher who gave up Ernie Banks' 500th home run in 1970. And 1970 was not a good year for, for Ernie Banks. His, probably his, his last decent year was 69. 70 was not pretty, and 71 was, I think, I, I think he still played in 71, and that was. Just a handful of at-bats, I think. Then he retired, I believe. Um, Ron Swoboda. So we're going to pull a fast action card. We're in the third inning, right? No. Uh, no, this inning's over. We're at the top of the third. One, two. Yep, we're at the top of the third. It's going to be Joe Torre. Here's a pitch. So we're going to three. It's a 63. 63 is a blank. Takes us over to Seaver, and Seaver is an out. If we want to know what kind of an out it is, we pull a card and say, He's a righty, and I like that. What this is fascinating. This game is great because it gives you an out for a lefty, and it gives you an out for a righty, and then it gives you an opportunity. Uh, it tells you right here with all the on-base situations, there's something different happening, pretty much in a lot of these. Um, so he's a righty, so the out for the righty is a ground ball to shortstop. But I'm just going to write a zero there. It just it's easier and faster. Saves ink. All right, it's a 26, and a 26 is going to be against the lefties a single. Otherwise, it's an out, and that retires the side. So three up, three down for Tom Terrific. So the Seaver's really settled down since that first inning. And uh, let's see what he can do for us here. The minute he gets in trouble, he's going to get pulled. All right, so it's uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Sobota. And that is a 41, and a 41 is a blank. We're going to go to the pitcher. <clears throat> 41 is a walk, base on balls. Ed Charles, here's the pitch. Three is a 62, 62 is a blank. Jarvis with a 62, and that's an out. What kind of an out? Charles is a right here. This is going to be a fly ball. Center field on the run is Jones, and he tracks it down. 
just write that zero there for the out. Here's Bob Johnson. That's a 24. 24 is an out, kind of an out. Fly out to right field this time. Two out. And Jerry Grody. Column three, because it's the third inning, 33, and that is an out, and that retires the side. So after the walk, it was three, retired three in a row, and we go to top of the fourth. Top of the fourth, it's Woody Woodward. And that is a top of the fourth. That's a 24. 24 is a hit by pitch on a one or a two. It's a 17, so it's an out, one down. Pitcher Jarvis batted uh, 085. Um, and this is the fourth thing, a 41. 41 on, is a base on balls. That's the, the that's the, the, the issue of having, being on a, being a C, not having your, your best stuff. All right. So Philippe Alou now. Let's see if Seaver can get out of this. He's already given up a, has a base runner on there. Four. We said it was four. So it's 41. 41 is a blank. And here it's going to be a base on balls. So this could lead to a huge inning here again. So we, we need another pitcher uh, to get us out of this. We need somebody who's going to be an A pitcher here. Let's see who I can bring in. Don Shaw is a lefty. A lefty gets an advantage, so I'm going to bring in a lefty. I do have a lefty batting, so that will work out perfect because a lefty is going to be 1 to 10 and 11 to 20. A and B, he doesn't get a chance to go to a C against a lefty from this point on. It's going to be a 12, so he's going to be a B. So that'll help us. So Seaver's out. Not going to play games. He already gave out a bunch of runs. I want to end him end up ending up giving a ton of runs. Because um, then it's hard to bring their ERAs down like that. So he's going to be a B. He can go how many batters? Eight batters. So Seaver goes three and a third. And he got roughed up a little bit. And we're going to see if we can get out of this inning for him. That would be great, but don't count on it. Don Shaw, lefty. Let's see what happens. To Mac Jones, the batter. All right, we're looking at the four column. It's a 23. 23 is a strikeout. Big strikeout by Don Shaw. Now it's Hank Aaron. And a four is a 14, and that is going to be an out. That will retire the side. So Don Shaw comes in, does a great job. Seaver's day is complete, and uh, he gave up uh, one, two, three, four, five, six hits, five runs, four earned runs, uh, walks. He walked two and struck out three. No, nope, struck out two. Walked two, struck out two. That was a tough outing for Tom Terrific, but we knew that. The minute we saw that we, we pulled up a C, we're like, oh, no. Which is you just hate for it to happen in the first inning. You don't mind an inning, a run in the first inning, and then maybe a couple of innings without one, and then a run in, in like that. But you don't want to give up five runs because then you got to pull them early, and that you know. So anyway, um, we are going to third base. Uh, you know what? That's going to have to be a double switch here. Let's see what we got here. We're going to bring in Kenny Boyer. And a double switch. Kenny Boyer is going to be a third base. And then Charles is out. And that's where the pitcher is going to take that spot. All right. So Kenny Boyer is up. Here's a pitch from Jarvis. Bottom of the fourth. That's a 56. 56 is a blank. We go to Jarvis, who's a 56. That's a strikeout. One down. Five to three, still a pretty good ball game, Buddy Harrelson. Again, it's the fourth inning, so we're looking at column four. It's a 41, 41 is an out, and it's a base on balls. Cleo Jones, here's a pitch from Jarvis, and that is a 56, 56 is an out, and on Jarvis is a strikeout. And now it's Tommy Davis. It's a 36. 36 on Davis is a blank. 36 here is an out, and that will retire the side. They leave one. No hits, no runs. Top of the fifth. So this play, this game plays pretty fast. 
so now we're looking at the fifth. We're looking at a 32. 32 is a blank. He's a B pitcher. That's going to be an out. Joe Torrey. 64. 64 is blank on Torrey's card. We look at Shaw under the B column because he's a B, and that's an out. Again, I can pull, and what kind of an out that was that? That was a ground ball second base. Cleve Boyer. Don Shaw, Cleve Boyer. Cleve Boyer has a home run. He's one for two. Two-run home run in the first inning. And uh, let's see. It's five. I just pulled that one. Let's pull it. Let's pull a new one. And it's a 25. 25 is going to be an out. That will retire the side. Three up, three down. All right. Kenny, Kenny, uh, Eddie, Eddie Cranepool. Steady Eddie from the Bronx. Fall Classic Baseball. Jarvis, the lucky pitcher. Yep. Ernie Banks, 500 home run. Here's a pitch from Jarvis. It's a, it's a uh, we are in the one through fifth inning, bottom of the fifth. So we're still looking column five. It's a 64. That's a blank. So Jarvis here is going to be a, an out. And it's a uh, five. It's a 54. 54 is a 54 chart. Usually a wild pitch or pass ball or an error in the outfield. Uh, we'll look and see. That's a five. It's a six. So it's going to be the right field, the right fielder. And we're going to roll for his error rating. That's a five. That may be an error on the right fielder, Hank Aaron. Let's see what his what his rating is out there. Um, actually, got I got to check something. I, it, uh, his error rating in right field is a six. So this could be an error, but let me double check that because again, I don't, I'm new to this game, so I don't have everything memorized properly. All right, uh, with nobody on, while this runner backside. Wait a second. No, that's not it. There's two two sets of this chart. Okay, 54 chart with bases empty, wild. And okay, so it was a right fielder, and we're going to check the E rating for the outfielder. If error, go to the exotic error chart. Otherwise, fly out. So it's a fly out. Oh, no, wait. Uh, wait a second. It is an error, right? So right fielder, one to six. Uh, we had a six there. In inning number five. So that's going to be one above his error rating, which is a five. So it's going to be an error on the right fielder. And then I'm going to roll. Okay. Uh, we got that. We rolled, and it was an error. Go to the exotic error chart. Exotic error chart, second time today. There's nobody on. And it's an error on the outfielder. Uh, let's see. Roll D20 again. And that is a 10. And a 10 is going to say double plus error. Batter safe at third. Runner advances three bases. If S runner on first, he is thrown out. There's none of that happening. Outfield exotic arm. Okay. So it's a double and an error. So we're going to have a runner at third base. Double. And he goes, and it's going to be an error on the right fielder. E9. And runner on third. And that's going to bring it up the... The pitcher spot, and we're going to have to pinch it. And who are we going to bring? We have to bring Selma. Uh, we're going to bring a lefty. So no, he is. A, we have a lefty batting. We're going to bring Jerry Bushek. He's going to bat. Bushek, pinch hitter, and he steps in. We're going to pull a card. Here's a pitch from Jarvis. It's the bottom of the fifth, and that's going to be a 42. 42 is a blank. But remember, Jarvis is a C pitcher, and that's going to be a base on balls. How many has he walked? He's walked one, two, three, four, five walks so far. It's a lot of walks. It doesn't say his walks on his card. It has his wins, his losses, 
his strikeouts. Not a big strikeout guy. So we're going to check. Let's look and see who we got. And the way I do this, um, I look for the pitchers who kind of pitch the most games, and I bring those guys in. So let's look for the pitchers. All right, so we got this guy, Cecil Upshaw. He's a righty. He would face Bob Johnson, who's still in there. Johnson is a righty, so uh, we can bring in Cecil Upshaw. He can go nine batters. We'll do that. I don't know the players anyway. So Jarvis is up and Upshaw is in. And let's see what he's going to be. He's going to be a three. He's going to be an A pitcher. Big advantage. Big advantage for the Braves. He's an A pitcher. And he can go nine batters. So we're going to put that there. We're going to circle it so we remember that. And here's Bob Johnson with the runner, runners on first and third. Again, we're in the bottom of the fifth inning, so we're using that column. Using the fifth column. It's a 43. That's a blank. But again, remember, that takes us to, to the pitcher's card when it's a blank, and that's going to be an out. But what kind of an out? Now we have to find out because we have runners on base. And again, we said it was a fifth inning. That's going to be what kind of an out? Uh, it's a fly out to left field. Now with a runner on third, run with risk. D6, one to three, he's safe. Four to six, he's out. And he is out at the plate. So the left fielder throws out Ron Swoboda, seven to two. And that is a double play. Uh, that is the actually, wait a second. Yeah, there was one out, so that's going to be a double play. And that retires the side. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the top of the sixth. So left fielder Rico Cardi throws out Ron Swoboda at the plate. Holy smokes. Dennis Menke. We're going to need a new pitcher now for the Mets. And who are we going to bring in? We're going to bring in uh, Dick Selma. Actually, you know what? In a game like this so early, let me see if I have like a, a, a starter that can do a little relieving. That would be nice. Chuck Estrada, he pitched seven games. Jack Hamilton, he pitched 17. Hal Raniff, he's in there. I'm going to bring him in. Raniff can go uh, 10. And we got to see what he's going to become. And he is a... An A pitcher, about time. Holy smokes. All right, now I wanted to show you the, the, the double D6. Pretty cool. Look at that. Double D6. So it's got two sixes, two fives, two fours, two threes, and like that. It's a, a novelty. Uh, Jerry Grody. Uh, okay, so we're going to get the top of the inning. So Shaw went 1.2. And now it's Raniff. Right. Or Reniff. Reniff was uh, three, three and three with a 1.5 whip, so he's not very good. He's going to face Menke, but today he's he's looking good today. And at the top of the six, that's a 56. 56 is a blank. Usually it's a strikeout. One to 16 is a strikeout, so let's pull a card. And it's a 16, so it is a K. So he strikes out the first batter he faces. Now it's Woody Woodward. And that is a six, and it's a 20, 26. Usually that's a base hit against a lefty. It's a base hit against a righty. It's going to be an out, two away. Here's Pat Jarvis is out. And uh, we're going to let the relief pitcher Cecil Upshaw bat. Let's see if I have a card for him. Otherwise, we'll have to we'll, we'll look at baseball reference and calculate, do a quick calculation. Of, of what he would bat with the six-sided die. He probably has no more than 10 at-bats, if that many. Maybe six at-bats, and he got maybe one hit, so it'll be, like, easy to do. Uh, we're looking for uh, Upshaw here, a, card, a batting card for Upshaw. I don't see it. I don't, I got two Mets, three Mets, four Mets. Hmm. 
The reason I don't see Upshaw is I, was, I went through the Mets when I was supposed to be going through the Braves. I was so focused on looking for the name Upshaw that I never looked at the team that I was going through. All right, so we may find a card for Upshaw. You get a lot of cards. Yesterday I counted one team had 48 cards. The sets are about $60. They're going to be holding a, a sale pretty soon. I'm going to get myself a set or two. But i got to slow down because uh, lately I've been buying a lot of sets of cards. So i got to slow down a little bit. Maybe sell a few. Then I'll feel better about buying some more. Because I, can, I can't fit them in my... In my I don't see Upshaw. I don't think Upshaw... Let me see Upshaw play 30 games, 45 innings. He's a relief pitcher. Let's see. Let's look at my phone. I'll show you guys how to do this real quick. I, now, I have all the cards online. I don't want to open the file. I don't want to do all that for, for a relief pitcher to bat. Just not interested. All right. Let's see. Cecil Upshaw. Wasn't he a... Uh, like an offensive lineman for the for the Oakland A's in the 70s, Cecil Upshaw. Cecil Upshaw. Okay. Here he goes. What, what did he bat in 1967? Show pitcher batting. All right, he had six at bats. Hilarious. He had two walks. So all right, so he's got he's got one out of ten. So one out of ten is gonna be a hit. A two hundred three is a walk. It's that simple. That's all he did. And and what is what is his strikeout? His strikeouts are a three. So he has three numbers he strikes out on. So it would be a one is a hit, a two and three is a walk, a four, five, and six is a strikeout. Wait, was that a ten sided die? No, that's a six sided die. This is a ten sided die right here. It's a two, so that's a base on balls. He had two base on balls and 10 plate appearances. So he walks, two out walk, for not Jarvis, but uh, Upshaw. I let him bat because I didn't want to switch right now. It's, nothing's happened. There's two outs. And now he's on at first. His speed, I don't know what his speed is. Don't really know. All right. He was a four batting card. You know, I didn't. I didn't get any. I have to. I think I have to print out the batting cards. That's weird. Are the pitcher batting cards? Or I don't know. I, had, I didn't see those in the, in the set. But I didn't. I didn't go through the American League teams. It could be embedded inside the the American League team. All right. So Felipe Alou is up. Here's a pitch from from Hal Reniff. And we are in the sixth, right? So it's 34. 34 is an out. And Reniff, we decided, was an A, so that's going to help us out. And that's going to be a single, base hit. And Upshaw is going to go to first and third. He's going to stop at second unless he's an F. And I don't know what he is, so we're just going to make him average. He's going to stop at second base, first and second. All right, Mac Jones. Mac Jones for today is 0 for 3. He's made two outs and then struck out. Here's the pitch from Reniff, or Reniff. It's a 14. 14 is an out, and that will retire the side. They leave two, no runs, one hit. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's a five to three ball game. So still we had a good, pretty good ball game. Unfortunately, Seaver did not have a good outing, but that's the name of the game. We pulled him early. He didn't, at least he didn't give up nine runs. He only gave up four. We can come back from that. Um, okay, so it's going to be Jerry Grody leading it off. It's going to be Jerry Grody, Boyer, Cleve Boyer, and then uh, not Cleve Boyer. Uh, who did we say it was? It was Ken Boyer. Ken Boyer. He's the he's on the Met. Cleve Boyer is on the Braves. And it's going to be Buddy House. Here's a pitch. 
Again, we're looking at 6. And 6 is a 63. That's going to be a blank. We're looking at Cecil Upshaw, who's an A. And it's going to be an L. Now it's Kenny Boyer. Pull a card. It's a 25. 25 is an out. Two away. Top of the order. Harrelson. Pull the card. Column six. That's a 66. That's going to be extra bases for sure. Unless there's a great play in the outfield. And there is a great play in the outfield. Center fielder. Mac Jones cuts the ball off. And Harrelson, who took a big turn and was thinking about going for two, changes his mind and stops at first. He's got three hits. He had three hits in yesterday's game. He's got three hits again today. Cleon Jones with two outs and a runner on first. Here is the pitch. That's a 55. That is smacked into right center field. Jones goes the opposite way. Let's see if Bud Harrison can go to third. He is fast, and it says fast to third. Go first and third. The, the Mets have a little something going here with two outs. Two out rally. Let's put out let's put on our rally caps. Uh, Tommy Davis, Mets best hitter. He's a 302 hitter. Against Upshaw. Let's see how Upshaw can go nine. He's gone one, two, three, four, five. So he still can pitch some more. Here's a pitch. We're looking at column six. It's a 13. 13 is an out, and that will retire the side. No runs, two hits, we go to the top of the seventh inning. Hank Aaron leading it off against Reniff. Reniff can go 10. He's gone five. Here's a pitch. Now we're looking at seven. It's a 46. That's a ballpark. I'll show you how to use the ballpark. Show you how to use the ballpark. Pretty easy. He's a right handed batter. You got a right handed person in the ballpark and left handed in the ballpark. How cool is that? Watch how simple this is. And roll a die. 20 sided die. That's a 10. 10 with a right handed batter says foul ball. If he's a righty, it's a foul out to the first baseman. So that's one away. That's your ballpark card. Rico Cardi. Pitch from Reniff. Seven is a 22. That's rip left center field. Uh, 22. No, not necessarily. Hold on. Hold on a second. No, it's not. It's a base on balls. Excuse me. It's a base on balls. Enrico Cardi can actually steal. We need to roll a two, one, or a two. And we got a, an eight, so he does not steal. He's on it first. Joe Torrey. Here's a pitch. It's a 63. 63 is a blank for Renef. An A is going to be an out. What kind of an out? Is it a double play? It's a line out. And it was a 63, we said, right? 63. I believe we said. Uh, yep. And you can refer to the white die of three, which is a line out to the first baseman. If it's a line out to the, if it would have been a 65, let's say, then it could have been a line out to third base. And of course, that would not happen there. But because uh, 65s are something else. But uh, if it would have ended in a five, if anything would have ended in a five, like it could have been a 35 or it could have been a 45, then uh, and it, we would have pulled out, it would have been a double play. So it's a line out to the first baseman. So it's an out, two down. And here's Cleve Boyer. And a seven, that's a 46. 46 is ballpark again. And we're going to roll a D20. And this time it's an eight. He's a right-handed batter. An eight is a pop-up again to the first baseman. And that retires aside. No runs, no hits, one left on the walk. And it's Eddie Cranepool here in the bottom of the seventh. We're moving fast in this game. It's a five to three ball game. It's a seven, 61, 61 is a blank. Cecil Upshaw has a strikeout. Let me make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He can go nine. So he, this is his last batter. And then our other boy is gone nine, and he can go, Randolph can go 10. So he will go, this will be his last batter. Oh, but he's due up, he's due up this inning, so he's probably not going to, he's going to be pulled. All right, so the one out, here's Ron Swoboda. Ron Swoboda hit a double and walked and uh, headed to Fielder's Choice. 
here's a pitch. We are in the bottom of the seventh, say 46. That's going to be ballpark again. He's a righty in the ballpark. Let's roll the D20. That's a 20. That is going to be a 54 chart. Wild section on the 54 chart. Front side, uh, wildest chart with nobody on. This is full. We're on third. Wildest. Okay, base is empty. Wildest. There's nobody on base. Where is that? Base is empty. Wildest. T20. Got to roll again. And this is going to be a 16. That is going to say pop out to shallow right field. Caught by the first, base, first baseman. Collision. Roll a D6. If a three, the first baseman is hurt. If a four, the second baseman is hurt. If a five, the right fielder is hurt. That's a five, so that is the right fielder is going to be hurt. That's going to be Hank Aaron. So we're going to send the trainer out there to see what happened. And it's an out. And we're going to go see what happened to Hank Aaron. And you know what? He's uh, He says he's going to stay in the game. We're going to send him for an MRI. This is 1967. We were insisting to send him for an MRI. But he's saying, what is an MRI? I never heard of that machine. Uh, now, I think they had MRIs in, in the 60s already. I, I don't know how prevalent they were, but I'm not, I'm not too sure on that. I, gotta, I don't want to pretend I know, and I, I don't really know. But you can check it out and tell me. When was the first MRI available for use in the hospital? Jerry Bushek, two outs. Now, he was the pinch hitter. He's not in there anymore. We're going to have to bring up another pinch hitter here with two outs, and we're going to bring in a new pitcher for the Mets. That new pitcher is going to be, uh, you know what? What are we useful for? We're going to bring in Dick Selma. Selma's coming in. Hopefully he can finish it out. Selma's going to be a 9. He's going to be a B. And Selma can go 12. All right, so he's going to be the new pitcher for the Mets. And um, we're going to get a pinch hitter. It's going to be, who's it going to be? Let's see who, who played yesterday. It's going to be John Sullivan, the catcher. John Sullivan, the catcher, is going to come in to pinch hit. All right. And uh, we put him there. Pull a card. And it's, uh, we're in the seventh. That's a 33. And that is an out to retire the side. No runs, no hits. We go to the top of the eighth, five to three ball game. All right, Dennis Mink against D Dick Selma. Here's a pitch. 12 is an out, one down. Woody Woodward, who's, 0 for, who's 1 for 3. He got a single in the first. It's a 65. That's going to be an out. I'm just not pulling out to see what kind of out it is. In case you're wondering, you're saying, what? We're, you know, you're not doing it now. I decided just to do it this this game. I change it up just to keep my, my brain fresh. So 42. 42 is an out. So three outs. What kind of an out is that last out? That's a fly out to center field. On the run is... Cleon Jones, and he tracks it down. There we go. Three up, three down for Dick Selma. And it's Bob Johnson. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, we need a pinch hitter here. Hold on. We need a pinch hitter. We're going to need a new pitcher as well. For the Braves, we're going to bring in Ramon Hernandez. What is he going to be? He's going to be, oh, an 18. That's going to be a C pitcher. Tough luck for the Braves. Mets may be able to come back. And, um, and Ramon Hernandez can go eight batters. And we're going to bring in a pinch hitter to see. We're going to look at that number on a pinch hitter. We're going to bring in... Gary Geiger. And 
And uh, let's see what number that was. That was a 45. And a 45 is also an out. Uh, so, And again, so nothing changes. Bob Johnson leading off against Ramon Hernandez. So we had a pitcher that went uh, 2.1, went 2.1. 2.1, Upshaw went 2.1. And Jarvis before that went uh, 5, no, nope, he went 4. 4.1. So this one went 2.2. Went 2.2 because he pitched that double play. That was two outs there. And now it's going to be Hernandez here in the bottom of the eighth against Johnson, who's a 348 hitter in almost in half the season. So he's a heck of a hitter. Got to get the 1970 season to practice with that. Um, all right, here's a pitch from Hernandez. We're in the eighth. That's a 35. 35 is going to be a blank. And when Hernandez is a C, that's going to be a ground ball and through for a base hit. So the Mets have the tying run at the plate and Jerry Grody. Here's a pitch. We're looking at a 53. 53 is a KD. The next number down is a 14, so it's not going to be a strikeout. Strikeout would have been 1 to 2. So now um, 53 is going to be a defensive check. Pull a card. Look in the bottom left. It's a center. Oh, a 53 is actually a range check to the center fielder. Mac Jones. This could be a double. And the run will score. So let's check Mac Jones. Let's check his range. This is a big play here. So Mac Jones has a center field range of 12. That's a really good range. Right? What is that? 60% he catches it. And he does. He runs it down. Robs Grody of a double. One away. And Kenny Boyer. Here's a pitch. That's an 11. 11 is a base on balls. 1 to 18 is a base on balls, and it is a base on balls. So now time runs are on base. Kenny Boyer is fast, so you want to write that in. And uh, Bob Johnson's average speed. A double will tie the game. Buddy Harrelson who's 3 for 3. He's up. And here's the pitch from Ramon Hernandez. That's a 56. 56 is a blank, and it's going to be a strikeout. I think that 56 is always, seems to be always a strikeout. Just notice that. So you get to start learning the game a little bit. Cleon Jones with two outs, two on. Pull a card. It's an eight. It's a 42. 42 is a blank. So now we're going to go to Ramon Hernandez, who's a C, and a 42 is a base on balls. That loads the bases. Now what we could do, Tommy Davis is a righty. We're going to bring in a new pitcher because this is not working. We're going to bring in a new pitcher here, Clay Carroll. See if he can get, get us out of this inning. So Carroll. And Carroll is going to be, oh, you know what? I'm um, in mistake on, on Hernandez. Okay, so I'm not going to go back. What I'm going to do is just turn Carroll into an A pitcher. Made a mistake on he's a lefty. I should, he shouldn't have been a C, should have been a B. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to give Carroll an A to make up for it, and it's going to be Tommy Davis. Here's a pitch, and eight is a 66. Holy smokes. That's going to tie up the game. And a 10 is going to be a double. What happens on a double? And from first to third with two outs, F scores. And Cleon Jones is F, and the Mets have taken a 6-5 lead. Bases clearing double. He drives in number 7, number 9, and number 2. 7, 9, and 2. Three RBIs. Tommy Davis. Big hitter for the Mets. And now it's Eddie Cranepool. 
Here's a pitch. It's a 36. 36 is a blank. Carroll's an A, and that's going to be an out. And that will retire the side, but the Mets pick up three runs on the huge double by Tommy Davis. And a one, two, three runs on two hits and two walks. And it's going to be Ron Svoboda. Well, he'll be up next inning if there's a next inning because the Mets, now it's last licks. Last licks, and it's Dick Selma against Felipe Alou. Here's a pitch. The ninth, that is a 22, and that is stroked to left center field for a base hit. Tying run is on base. And uh, Selma was what? Was an A pitcher? Selma was an, oh no, Selma was a B pitcher. So we're going to make him a C pitcher to correct the, the mistake we made for the, so we're going to give them a, the same chance the Mets had to come back with a runner on first. Mac Jones, Mac Jones is not going to bunt. He's going to hit. And we're not going to do a hit and run here. Um, we could do a hit and run here. Let's see if I have a chart. I, uh, Let's see where that chart is. Hold on a second. Hit, hit and run bunt chart. Let's see if I can find that. And then we try to hit and run. Get the run in third. That'll be the time run. It's a six to five ball game. Thanks to Tommy Davis's three run double. Here's a hit and run chart. Let's try hit and run. Teach you how to do that. All right, first, Mac Jones. Let's pull. Uh, for this one, we got to add them up. Two D6s, and we add them up. And that is a six. A six is going to say, check, roll, 42 for a walk. All right. Selma is a walk. So it is a walk. If not a walk, round out the pitcher. So it's a base on balls. Nice roll, 33 ball, run tries to steal. Hold on a second. This is a tricky one. It's got two different separate lines here. Oh, okay, I see, I see. All right, so this was a, a one and a five to become a six. So it's not, it's not a 42, a four and a two, and it's not a three and a three. If not, a walk, round out to the pitcher, runners advance. If the dice roll is a 3-3, three, three, it's a ball, runner tries to steal at regular grade as the catcher has trouble handling the pitch down and in. Okay, so this is going to be a ground out to the pitcher, runner advances. Okay, because it's neither the 33 or the 42. All right. What do I do with my pen? Okay, so it's a runner advances to second base. Tie run is second base now here in the top of the ninth. Uh, wait a second. What did I say? That was weird. That's six. Grounds it, but one to three. All right. So it's just an out with an advance. And now it's going to be Hank Aaron. Here's a pitch to Hank Aaron. So now it's a 41. 41 is a blank. And it's going to be a base on balls. First and second, Rico Cardi. Pitch to Cardi. It's a nine. It's a 41. 41 is a blank. 41 is a base on balls. Base is loaded. And Joe Torrey. Here's a pitch to Torrey. We're looking at the top of the ninth, and that's a 65. 65 is a home run off the pitcher. 65 is going to be a one uh, a one to six is a home run. Pull a card. We're looking at nine. It's a 17, so it's going to be a fly out the center field. And it's going to be a sacrifice fly, so the game is going to be tied.
Uh, so it is a flat center field. Let's check it out. Bases loaded. Let's see how they do it in the game. Out chart, bases empty. Now we'll have a bases full out chart with the bases full. Here it is. So out chart with the bases full. And out codes, URF, out codes, code. So 65, which is not a home run. Let me look at the instructions real quick. So 65, it's not a home run. It's usually a fly out to center field, but with a runner on third base, it should be an automatic tag up. But I just don't, I'll make it that. I just don't remember that officially being what, what, what the rule is. Um, it makes sense that it is. It's a ball that should be hit deep. And I have to find a pitcher card for that. Fit the, the, the chart with a pitcher card. See if I can find that. That's a better card. Let's see if I got the picture card there. No, it's not there. Let me track it down. And I showed you all the charts earlier. There's a ton of charts here. I gotta go through. Okay. Not it. Not it. I gotta put these in a in a binder. Because they're gonna get filthy if I keep on touching them and going over them a million times. Gotta go. They have about 25 charts for all on base situations, but they're only one sided. So that makes it a lot more of a little bit of a pain. Uh, okay, I'm still looking for the, the, the pitcher information chart, the pitcher card information chart. So it tells me what that 65 becomes when it's not a home run. Here it is. Okay, 65. Split maze, split on the replay result is an out. Oh, play result is, is either a home run or an out. The home run grade is only from 0 to 20. The grade is negative number, and then that is subtracted from the home run, the batter's home run split number. May split his home run with the bomb. Dish 155 would drop. Pitcher set in play. Result is now an out with a negative. Okay. Well, it's, it doesn't say it's a fly out. It may not be a fly out. It says it's a play result, home run or an out. So it's so then we're not going to play it as a fly out. Hold on. We're going to just play it as an out. See what happens. So bases are loaded, one out. We're going to pull it out. We're going to pull a card. And it's going to be a line out. And uh, the number was a 65, so it's going to be a 5, and that's going to be a line out to the third baseman. So no runner scores. Let's fix that. Bases are still loaded, and there's two outs. So it's an out, line out to the third baseman, and now it's all in the hands of Cleve Boyer. Let's see what happens here. Cleve Boyer with the bases loaded. We got a C pitch of Selma in there. Let's see if we can get out of this. It's a 63. 63 is a blank. C pitcher, 63 is an out. Ball game over. Let's win it. Can't say I didn't, I didn't try to make it up to him. No runs, one hit. It's like an umpire. He makes a bad call and then he tries to give you an opportunity to make it up. Uh, so it's going to be final score. It's Atlanta 5. Uh, the Mets six, six to five Mets win it. And what a crazy game that was. And you get these, you get really good games in, with this, uh, this mechanic. That's two hits, three hits, four hits, five hits, six hits, seven hits. That's only had seven hits. And five of those came in the first inning. Mets had one big hit there, another one there, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the Braves, five runs, seven hits, one error. The Mets, six runs, ten hits, and two errors. Mets pull it out in the bottom of the eighth, a bases loaded double by Tommy Davis. And... Um, 
off uh, an A relief pitcher, by the way. Off an A relief pitcher. And that's it. The loss is going to go to Hernandez. And uh, the win is going to go to Selma. And that's it. This is uh, Fall Classic Baseball. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. It's a, it's a fun system. It's super easy to play. As you can see, it's very realistic, and there's a lot of little things going on. Uh, you get the fast action cards, and 99% of it is resolved for you. I'm going to set up the next game now. Let's hopefully see where he'll roll over. He'll start. He'll get an A column, and he'll pitch much, much, much better. Get him to go a complete game. He's an A, man. He's, he's shutting you out. So he, you know, even though he gave him four runs, I'll get that back. That's not an issue at all. I will get that back for sure. And that's it. So we're gonna we're gonna who, who do the Mets play next night? What I do is I go to Digi Day out and I print out all the score sheets for the month. And the next game is the July fifteenth. This was July eighth. And it's going to be against New York at Cincinnati. So they, they are away. We're going to get the Reds. I'm right to my right. Let's get the Reds out. Reds are right here. And I'm going to write in the data for Seaver in this game. He went 3.16543.16542. 3.16542. Start number 17. And now it's going to be start number 18 versus the Reds. And I'll probably play that later. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for stopping by. I hope this helps you know the game a little bit better. You know, always feel free to uh, reach out to me and ask me questions, more questions. But, uh, I mean, I can't do a better tutorial in a, in an hour, 20-minute tutorial. I wanted to keep all these tutorials short, but what I started doing is just kind of letting it roll um, last night and tonight because the games get good and the Mets started coming back and I said, Oh man. Uh, so uh, that's it. I want to do three more. Uh, this was the sixth. So I'm going to do seven, eight, nine, so, uh, 10. So seven, eight, nine, ten. So four more um, tutorials for fall classic. So I have, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I'll have a lot of them out there. I don't know who else had them out there, but there weren't many. There weren't any for back to basics. I did about 10. And guys ask about back to basics. I, I was I wanted to play back to basics and there were no tutorials. I couldn't see what it looked like. So at least guys will be and I and I feel that I'm going slow enough to really show you how to do it. And I'm I'm speaking through every every play and the procedure. So you get comfortable and say, okay, I know how to do this already. And uh, and that's it. So now I'm gonna put the Braves away. Now I'm thinking of, of as soon as they're gonna have a sale, I want to buy 1970. 70 is the, the new season that we're going to start in March in my league. So uh, I'm going to play APA 1970, and I want to play uh, Back to Basic. Uh, not Back to Basic. I want to play – I'm already playing Back to Basic 1970. I want to play uh, um, a Fall Classic in 1970 as well. That would be a blast to do that. And uh, that's about it for the Braves. The Braves are going away now, putting them away. These are beautiful cards, man. So I was thinking of printing them out, but then printing the cards you print out are ugly. The paper's creepy. These are beautiful. They slide nicely off your, you know. They got the gloss finish. They're beautiful cards. They're easy to read. So I highly, uh, you know, uh, 60 bucks. The set, 60 bucks, but you get you can get up to 50 cards per team. So it's definitely, you're not, it's not like they're giving you 20 cards or 27 cards, you know. You're getting like the whole thing, and these are high quality cards. They're beautiful. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing the next game already. I'm already looking forward to see we're getting a better, a better opportunity with better roll. So, and that's about it. So Cincinnati Reds are going to get ready. Let me pull this out. Oh, Seaver did not get a, a decision on that, so I got to put that line there. No decision there. So he's five and five so far. He's got raise about 370. He'll get that down. He had a 276 yard run. We'll get that down. And it's my fault mainly. The beginning of the year, I was making a lot of mistakes. 
I wasn't pulling him. I was waiting for him to settle down when he was a C. He ended up being a C like four games in a row. That really hurt his ERA. Plus, I was misplaying it. When there's a C pitcher, you gotta have, you gotta be Captain Hook. You gotta pull, you gotta pull your guy early, fast. Like I did, I pulled him tonight. If I didn't pull him that way tonight, he would have given up ten runs. So uh, this is gonna be start number. Let me say. 18. Let's write that at the top. And uh, that's about it. This is CP Cards and Dice. What I do now is uh, I pull out Cincinnati. This is the ballpark card. I put the Mets ballpark card away. And I'm going to bring out the, the starters. Floyd Robinson, Veda Pinson, Pete Rose, Tony Perez, Darren Johnson, Lee May, Holm, Helms, Coker, and Queen. Mel Queen is going to be the, the pitcher. Mel Queen, they got some nice names. Floyd Robinson is playing. He's a right fielder. Beta Pinson. Okay, I think the whole lineup is set up for me already from the last time I played him. Tony, that, that's the great thing about playing these older seasons. The, the lineups stay the same, game to game. Tommy Helms is in there. I got Lee May ahead of him. Coker, Cardinal's not in there. Billy McCool is in there. Arrigo, Lee May is in there. So, so Lee May goes there. Here's Mel Queen. He's there. I need Jimmy Coker. He's going to be a catcher. There he is. Jamie, Jimmy Coker. Jimmy Coker had 97 at bats. And now I got to get a pitcher hitting card for Queen. And there it is. Perfect. Boom. So I got everybody. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm missing. No, seven, eight, nine. There it is. That's how fast that was. Queen is right here. He's going to be at the top. Seaver's going to be at the bottom. Behind the scenes. Now he's turned into a behind the scenes video. And, uh, and that's it. Oh, wait. Uh, that's it. These guys. Johnny Bench is not playing. Must be injured. And now it's going to. We got these guys that are going to be down here. Now the Mets. My Mets. Ah, Stahl is playing in this game. He's a lefty. Uh, he's a left-handed, really good center fielder. Who else that who doesn't normally play is playing in this game? Nobody. All right. So we look, we just got to look for uh, Stahl. He's a lefty. And let's look for him at the top again because I think I, I think I remember seeing him before. No, he's not at the top. So he must be in here somewhere. Let's see if he's at the bottom. Not the bottom either. Uh, Hamilton goes. There he is, Larry Stahl. So he bats second. So it's going to be Harrelson, Stahl, Cleon Jones is out, Tommy Davis, Cranepool, Svoboda. Uh, it's going to be Bushek, Brody. That's it, Tom Seaver. So I'm ready to roll. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little break though. I'm gonna take a break, come back refreshed. Not doing any more streaming tonight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Done. And now we just gotta roll to see. Let's find out what receiver is gonna be. He's a 19, another C. And another 18. Wow. Okay. So two C pitchers once again. So again, if We don't know what's going to happen with that. We'll see. And uh, I may have to have a quick hook for Seaver again. But when he becomes an A, man, he, he shuts the team out. So I don't have to worry. So just have to have a, keep a close eye on him, see how he's doing. This is the CP Cards and Dice. Thanks for stopping by. I will see you guys soon. Take care now. All classic baseball. It's a lot of fun. Try it out.